Welcome back. Uh, in the last video, we were discussing about uh, in finding uh, inverse uh, transforms of uh, certain uh, complex valued functions. So, let us continue to do that. In, the, in some of the examples, we made use of this convolution property. Uh, so, that is where we made a slight uh, error. Let us uh, look at uh, the problem uh, where we have done these uh, inverse transforms. So, to start with uh, z, uh, z inverse of uh, z square by z minus a into z minus b. So, that is the fourth example that we have done. If you look at this, so finding this we are looking, we are trying to find this uh, z inverse z transform and you write like this and then you use the convolution property and finally up to here is fine. Okay. So, this is fine and this is fine. So, so what is this one and you write this, the convolution of this is this and that is this is where you have a mistake. So, you do not have to do so, this is the mistake here is this a of n a, a power n is only defined for n positive. Okay. So, a power n is actually 0. So, if you call this f of n which is equal to a power n is a, n is positive, n is positive this is the case. f of minus n that is a power minus n is actually 0. You have to consider this is 0 for n negative, n positive. So, uh, that, that means to say uh, a power n is equal to 0 for n negative. So, this we have not made use of this here. Okay. If you use, so let us, uh, you need not worry about what is uh, bigger of uh, a is bigger or small modulus of a is bigger or modulus a is uh, smaller. So, let us look at this uh, convolution. So, if convolution as such, uh, you have this, uh, let us not look at this, uh, which one is bigger, which one is smaller. So, let us uh, just look at uh, directly what is the convolution. So, this is your convolution and if you see, m is running from 0 to infinity uh, a power n minus m and b m. So, what is uh, when m is equal to n, uh, n plus 1 what happens? If m is n plus 1 a power n minus m uh, is actually a power minus 1 which is actually 0 because a negative powers are 0. So, m equal to n plus 2 also you see that a power n minus m is actually a power minus 2 and so on so which is actually 0. So, this is same because of that you can write this is as m is from 0 to n up to n there is no issue. So, only from n plus 1, n plus 2 is all becoming 0 because a power n minus m is 0. So, you have 0 times b power m. So, they are all 0. So, only n uh, sums, uh, so only n terms you have m is running from 0 to n, n plus 1 terms basically. Okay. So, this sum, this finite sum is the result of this uh, z inverse. Okay. So, this if you calculate, you can write this as uh, a power n is uh, common and uh, b power n is also common, uh, this is m. Okay. So, you have uh, you have a sum which is running from b by a, uh, this is a power n times m is running from uh, 0 to n, b by a power m. So, this is what it is. So, this sum if you write it uh, m equal to 0 this is 1. So, 1 minus a times the first term times min 1 minus this is your uh, finite sum geometric sum. So, what you have is b by a power uh, you have 0 to m. How many you have? How many terms? So, you have n. So, you have uh, n plus 1 divided by 1 minus b by a. So, this is the result. So, what you have here is a power n a power n goes and a a cancel. So, you get uh, a power n uh, finally, the result is a power n plus 1 by a minus b. Okay. Minus b power n plus 1 because this a power n plus 1. So, you have uh, a power n plus 1, a power n cancel and you have only a, a you can uh, cancel here. So, you get uh, this is your results. So, this is the result of uh, this z transform, z inverse of this. Okay. Z inverse if you want, you get this is what is your result. So, the same thing uh, we can do here, uh, same similar thing and we have done, uh, we have evaluated this uh, inverse z transform of this function in the last video. 
and there we have not used the convolution. So, this uh, problem number 5 there is no issue and problem number 6 that is where we use this convolution. So, if you actually see this, so z inverse of this function uh, we write it as z inverse of this plus this and you see that uh, each of this is a convolution of this and you can write it this as a convolution of this together n, n convolving with this if you write uh, convolution of these two functions. So, you have seen that this convolution uh, if again so the here a this is your uh, a uh, this is your f n f of uh, n minus m and this is your g g uh, g n. So, you have a g m you have to write g m okay, and you have to take this uh, summation m is from 0 to infinity. So, if m equal to up to n and f is uh, having positive term, positive arguments. If m equal to n plus 1 onwards f of n minus m is actually f of negative so negative arguments because of that these are all 0. So, you have only uh, negative side is uh, it's, uh, 0 okay inverse uh, any uh, signal will, will have 0 you are only have you are only looking for positive side. So, you, if you assume that, that these are all 0 and what you have is this sum will be again m is running from this. So, this convolution sum will be m is running from m to n. So, m to n you have this. So, you write m to n sigma m to n this is what you have either either of this is true. Now, you can easily see that this is equal to m n square. So, you actually look at this how do I do? So, you pick up you fix any n any n you pick up. Uh, so, let us say uh, some n. So, you have if you pick up n m equal to n this is 0. So, this m equal to n. So, m equal to n minus 1 this is 1 and m equal to n minus 1 and you have this value is uh, 2 right. Uh, so, how do you see this? Uh, this is equal to n square. Uh, let us say let us look at uh, term by term. So, let us fix n equal to uh, 1 okay? uh, first of all 0 if we put 0 0 then m is 0 0 into 0. So, so finally, you get uh, you get 0. So, answer is 0 n equal to 0 this uh, value is 0 and okay? uh, let us let me write like this. So, this is like uh, this is 0 if n equal to 0 n equal to 1 if you look at it n equal to 1. Uh, n equal to 1 if you put m is running from 0 to 1 m equal to 0 1 minus 0 that is 1 and h of uh, 0 is uh, h of 0 is 1 okay plus h of negative that is 0. So, you have simply 1 1 plus m equal to 1 1 minus 1 that is 0. So, anyway 0. So, it is together it is 1 n equal to 1 it is n equal to 2 if you calculate you can easily see that uh, 2 minus uh, m equal to 0 m equal to 0 2 minus 0. So, 2 times m equal to 0 h 0 plus negative. So, that is 1 uh, plus m equal to 1 or uh, 2 minus 1 that is 1 times and uh, this will be yeah, h 1 and h 0 that is 2. So, you have 2 plus uh, m equal to 2 finally. So, 2 minus 2 that is 0. So, you have 4 now. So, like this you go on you can easily see that uh, n equal to 3 you get 3 square. So, you and so on you will get ok. So, by induction one can show that or some other means uh, you can you can easily see that is actually n square ok. So, the, the uh, minor mistake that we had is uh, we have not considered when you write the convolution you have to consider only a negative uh, you have to consider only positive only positive n positive integers only this is true negative wherever ne and you look at the quantity that is negative it has to be taken as 0 ok. So, you view this as f of n and g of n f of n g of n has to be 0 in the negative side ok. So, this is how you can see this n square. Now, let us look at the applications of these uh, z transform. So, we can solve this I can use these uh, z transforms to solve uh, some uh, difference equations. Differential equations are basically discretized version of differential equations. 
So, they are like uh, uh, recurrence relation kind of things. So, you can just uh, look at some uh, difference equations. So, applications, uh, applications of the transform. So, I will basically give two applications, one is uh, solving this uh, Z transforms, uh, I mean one is solving uh, difference equations, other one is using these Z transforms, you can evaluate certain sums. There we used uh, Laplace transform to evaluate certain integrals involving a parameter, here we use uh, these Z transforms to evaluate certain sums involving a parameter. So, we will see this uh, as an application before after finishing these uh, difference equations. So, let us see solving, uh, so first application is that we see we will do only two, two applications, one such is uh, solving uh, difference equations, difference equations. So, let us like, uh, look at the difference equation looks like, uh, so let us look at the first order if you have any uh, function, so unknown function is f n plus 1 minus f of n equal to 1. So, if you look at f of n plus 1 n, so this is n plus 1 if it is this, this is the first order okay, uh, first order. If it is the n plus 2, this is second order okay. So, this is actually f n plus 1, n plus 1 n involving. So, functions involving n plus 1 and n arguments that is first order. If you have n plus 2, n plus 1 and n involving, so any combination of this f of n plus 2, f of n plus 1 and f of n. So, function of these 3 is a second order uh, difference equation. If you it involve, if you involve n plus 3, that is third order difference equation. So, any combination of these, these things is called third order difference equations. If you involve these 2, it is a first order. Is involved these three, it is a second order, and if you involve all of them, it is a third order, and so on. So, you can see that this is a first order difference equation. So, this is a, once you have this difference equation, this is running from n is from uh, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Okay. So, that is what is given. You need to find what is f of n. Since I told this is a discretized version of difference equation, differential equation. If you can, when you solve this differential equation, corresponding differential equation, in the differential equations, when you solve the first order differential equation, you get one arbitrary constant. To account for that arbitrary constant, you give the initial condition. Here also, you provide here similar way initial condition. What is the initial condition here? Instead of uh, n equal to 0, that is the initial condition. f of 0, you can provide. So, you will be given that. So, let us take it as 0. So, how do I solve this? Uh, so, let us let us solve this one. Okay. First start of this, so this is a solve this a difference equation with this initial condition. So, solution. So, how do I apply? I here I apply apply a Z transform, apply a Z transform to the equation. We get what we get is f of n plus 1. What is the Z transform? You have seen already some on the properties of Z transforms. Uh, when you apply f of uh, n plus one, that is f of n plus m. If you when you apply Z transform of f of because of linear property, first of all, f of n plus one. This is uh, Z transform of this minus Z transform of f of n, and is equal to Z transform of this function. This is you consider this as a sequence for each n you have this is one constant. So, it is a kind of constant sequence. Okay. So, what you have is this is this is a sequence When you see this uh, constant is basically a sequence. So, that is Z transform of the sequence 1. Okay. So, constant sequence. So, this is what you have. Now, you, see, you can apply the property of the Z transform, Z transform of f of n plus m that is Z power m times Z transform of f of n minus sigma r is running from 0 to m, m minus 1 f of r into z minus z power minus r. So, you can use that property and write here because this is the 1 n plus m equal to 1, you can write this as uh, z power 1, z power 1 times z transform of f n as a function of z of obviously and uh, minus you go 
you remove this r is from 0 to m, m is 1 here and you have uh, f of r times z power minus r. So, this is actually f of 0 minus f of 0 minus f 1 times uh, f 1 divided by z. Sorry, here m minus 1, go, you go up to m minus 1, m equal to 1. So, this is r is from 0 to 0. Okay. So, what you have only first term, so only one term. Okay. So, this one, this is m equal to 1. So, r is going running from 0 to m minus 1. So, m minus 1 is 1 minus 1 that is 0 minus z transform of f of n. This is equal to z transform of 1 is simply we know that this is z divided by z minus 1. So, what is this one? This is actually, so because of this quantity, this is uh, mod z is greater than 1, this is valid. We know for this one, we know uh, because of this unknown, because this is unknown, so we can take the same domain over which this is true. So, you have a z of uh, z times z transform of uh, f n, this is a function of z minus f of 0, this is by f of 0 that is 0 is given. So, you have uh, this is this one minus z transform. So, z transform of the same thing. So, you have we can combine this with this and z minus 1 times this equal to z divided by z minus 1, this is valid here. So, if we actually see what is the z transform of f n as a function of z is z divided by z minus 1 whole square in this domain. So, this you have already seen that this is uh, if you actually see earlier z transform of uh, f of n which is n. If you actually see that is value is z times z minus 1 whole square. So, this is uh, n into 1 this is minus d dz of z transform of 1 the sequence 1 that is minus d dz of uh, z by z minus 1, this is actually same as z divided by z minus 1 whole square. So, you can easily see that this is true for every n 0, 1, 2, 3 inverse. Okay. Uh, so, z inverse. So, what is that? f of n. So, inverse transform gives inversion gives left hand side this is the f of n because this is the inverse transform of z transform and right hand side inverse transform is because of this. So, inverse transform of this quantity is uh, this quantity is same as the uh, n simply n. So, you get this. Okay. So, this is so if you have this difference equation of first order with one initial condition that is f of 0 is given here and you can uh, calculate what is the z transform of f of n in this domain and you can so once you invert it you can get your f of n that is what is the solution you are looking for. So, let us look at uh, some other examples. Let us solve uh, another first order uh, difference equations. Uh, Let us solve f of n plus 1 plus 2 times f of n equal to n. And given that, so n is running from 0, 1, 2, 3 onwards, given that initial condition because the first order f of 0 is 1. Let us say, let us say this is 1 given. Okay. The solution if you look for z transform application, z transform takes the equation to this form, to the form z transform of f of n plus 1 is z times z transform of uh, f of n that let me call this uh, f capital F of z. Okay. If I call this the transform of f n is uh, z, uh, if I instead of denoting z transform of f of n as a function of z, I am writing capital F of z. So, this one minus here f of 0 because the first order f of 0 that is 1 and then plus 2 times z transform of f of n is if I uh, denoted with this, this is equal to z transform of n that just now we have seen that. So, value is z divided by 
z minus 1 whole square because right hand side valid in this domain. So, you can consider C equation in this domain. So, this implies because f of z we do not know where it is actually valid. Okay. So, because it involves left hand side it is involving this f of z right hand side is this in this domain. So, it has to be f of z also should be in the same domain. So, what is f of z? f of z is uh, z plus 2 uh, then minus equal to z plus you take this minus z to the other side z plus z by z minus 1 whole square. So, this is uh, okay. So, let us look at this this implies f of z is z divided by z, z plus 2. So, this plus z divided by z plus 2 times z minus 1 whole square. Why I am not combining is I know this z divided by z plus 2 I can invert it easily. <coughs> so, inversion will give before I invert this let us write this as uh, this as it is because I know it is inversion and this you put it in the uh, partial fractions method. Uh, you can use the partial fraction method here because this uh, degree is smaller than uh, denominator. So, you have uh, if you write this in the as a partial fractions 1 is over z plus 2. So, it is going to be 1 by 9 times z divided by z plus 2 I am writing directly 3 by 9 times z divided by z minus 1. So, actually minus 1 by 9 times z, mi, uh, z by z minus 1 plus 3 by 9 times z divided by z minus 1 whole square. So, this is how you get the partial fractions as these 3 for this uh, second term. Now, we can invert this is your f of z. So, inversion gives uh, gives f of n running from 0 1 to onwards. This is easily you can see that this is actually what is z by z plus 2 this is a power n. So, you have 2 power n right. So, z z minus minus 2 that is minus 2 power n plus 1 by 9 minus 2 power n here 1 by 9 times z by z minus 1 is simply 1 okay 1 power n. So, that is 1 plus 3 by 9 times z by z minus 1 square is simply n. So, this is equal to f of n equal to minus 2 power n is common. So, you have 1 plus 1 by 9 is 10 by 9 and you have uh, my plus 3 by 9 n minus 1 by 9. So, you can write it nicely minus 2 power n times 10 or you have 3 n uh, minus 1 plus 10 times minus 2 power n. So, this is your f of n n is running from 0 1 to 3 onwards. So, this is your solution of the first order difference equation. So, let us look at some more uh, examples. We will do only these examples. This is how this is how you apply your uh, apply your uh, properties of the transforms. Apply the z transform and uh, use the properties of these uh, z transforms to get the inversion, and that is your solution of and make use of this initial data, whatever is given. So, we have seen some uh, Fibonacci series that is uh, starting with 1, 1, uh, you just add this. So, you need to Fibonacci uh, sequence starts with 1, 1 and you add this you get 2 and then again you add these 2 you will get next term. Last 2 terms you add you get a next term and so on. So, this is your Fibonacci sequence. So, if I put this so the basic idea is last 2 terms that if I call this f of n plus f of n plus 1. So, let us say n equal to n you start somewhere n plus 1 and this is n plus second term. So, that is your f of n plus 2 second term and what is known is initial values that is f of 0 equal to 1 and f of 1 equal to 1. So, this is f of n plus 2 because of f of n plus 2 this is second order difference equation. So, you can solve this with this initial data. So, now question is finding uh, how to find f of n, n is from as a formula okay. So, 
So this you already know this is your sequence you can instead of giving like this as the numbers you can give uh, nth term of this uh, Fibonacci series that is your solution of this difference equation. So let us uh, find out how do we do this so apply Z transform to the apply Z transform to the equation to the equation to the second order equation difference equation we get what we get if you apply this so for example f of n plus 2 if you apply f of n plus 2 you get z square times uh, capital F of uh, z that is a z transform of f of n minus m equal to 0 f of 0 minus f of 1 times that is m equal to because this is the second order m is uh, summation is m r is running from 0 to m minus 1 m is 2 2 minus 1 is 1 so we have f of 1 times 1 by z okay z power minus r that is 1 by r 1 by z okay so this is your for this term right hand side and left hand side capital f of z plus z times f of z that is a z transform of f minus f of 0 that is 1 anyway. So if you actually see both sides and combine uh, what is f of z, f of z if you look take the terms z square here and you bring it this side that is going to be minus z plus 1 you bring these two terms to the other side and keep the other uh, the other side. So if you keep here that is going to be z square minus f naught so you have z square comes this side and you have here um, uh, z square by 1 into 1 by z that is z so you have plus z here so these two terms will become z square plus z if I use this and here minus z into f of 0 so this is simply z so you have z z goes so that is what is is this so this implies f of z is simply z square divided by z square minus z plus 1. You can use uh, you can use your uh, convolution theorem okay so if I write this as uh, z by z by z minus you have two roots here z square minus z uh, plus uh, 1 <coughs> has 0 has two roots you can write this as uh, z minus so let us call this uh, some a and into z minus b so if you do that these roots you can find a and b and a and b a or b is actually uh, roots are what is your z z is 1 plus or minus square root of uh, b square that is uh, 1 minus 4 ac 4 ac is 4 divided by 2 so you have actually half plus or minus i root 3 by 2 so these are your roots so a is that b is with minus sign so you consider this as z minus uh, so you call this a equal to 1 plus root 3 i root 3 divided by 2 b is 1 minus i root 3 divided by 2 so you have uh, z minus a z minus b you can write like this so we have seen that this is actually equal to uh, a power n convolving with b power n earlier you have seen okay so that is the convolution if you inversion inversion directly gives z inversion of z inverse of this function you have earlier seen that this actually uh, this is convolution this is equal to convolution as you have seen m is running from 0 to n uh, a power n minus m b power m okay so this we have already seen that this is actually a minus b uh, a power n plus 1 minus b power n plus 1 so n is running from 0 1 2 3 onwards so this is your uh, where where b is where a and b is um, a is a, is, a and b are this so let me simplify if you do that what happens is that 1 plus i root 3 power uh, n plus 1 minus 1 minus i root 3 power n plus 1 divided by 
So, 2 power n plus 1 ok. So, because of this and here denominator uh, what you have is uh, this a minus b that is a minus b if you do uh, 1 1 goes uh, 2i 2i root 3 divided by 2. So, i root 3. So, this is exactly so you have uh, if you write this root 3 here and you have a minus i bring that i up. So, this is your uh, Fibonacci sequence uh, formula nth term of the Fibonacci sequence is this ok. So, this term will give if, if you keep writing n equal to 0, n equal to 1 and so on you will get this sequence ok. So, this is how we can solve this uh, second order difference equation which happened to be a solution uh, which happened to model a Fibonacci sequence. Uh, Fibonacci sequence is a solution of this uh, a second order difference equation. So, let us look at some more uh, second order equations, one more uh, let us look at. So, solve the initial value problem that is solve f of n plus 2 minus 3 times f of n plus 1 and then you have plus 2 times f of n equal to 0. If I want to solve this, it is the second order, I have to give you initial conditions, two initial conditions f of 0 and f of 1 should be prescribed. Let me take this as 1 and 2, okay. So, this solution uh, same technique we apply uh, z transform gives z transform gives uh, f of n plus 1 that is z square times capital F of z, z transform of f of n minus f of 0 that is 1 and then minus 2 times 1 by z f of 1 into z power minus 1. So, you have this and this one minus 3 times f of n plus 1 uh, is z times z transform of f of n f z minus f of 1 is 1. So, this is your uh, z transform for this second term. The third term is simply z trans 2 times z transform of f n equal to 0. Okay. So, this implies z square combine f of z. So, you have minus 3 z here plus 2. So, that is the coefficient of uh, capital F of z and uh, other terms you bring it to the other side. So, you have z square comes out and there is your this term and here minus 2 z. So, it is going to be plus 2 z and this if you bring the other side this is going to be plus 3 z. So, there is going to be minus 3 z okay and then uh, that is what it is. So, you have this is equal to z square minus z. So, you have z into z minus 1. So, this implies capital F of z is equal to z into z minus 1 divided by z square minus 3 z plus 1. So, that is z minus 1 times z minus 2. So, if you actually write like that, so you can easily see this one. So, this is this gets cancelled you have z by z minus 2. So, inversion gives simply inversion gives z inversion of uh, f of z which is f of n which I call as this is z inverse of right hand side z divided by z minus 2. So, this here uh, clearly see that this is valid mod z greater than 2 ok that is why unknown also should be in that region. So, we have a z inversion of this is actually 2 times n. So, n is running from 0, 1, 2, 3 onwards. So, this is your solution. 2 power n is the solution of this second order difference equation with this initial data. Okay. We change this initial data, you may end up by f of z something else for which you have to find the inverse transform of the inverse z transform. Okay. So, this is how we solve this uh, second order uh, difference equations. Uh, Let us do some more examples. Uh, in second order, solve uh, f of n plus 2 minus f of n plus 1 plus f of n equal to 0 n is running from 0, 1, 2, 3 onwards and you have a second order equation. So, you should provide the initial conditions are 2 f of 0 f of 1 let me take it as 2. Okay. 
So, so what is the solution here? So, if you apply the same technique, apply application of the transform gives. What is the equation? Equation becomes z square times capital F of z minus small f of 0 that is 1 minus cap f of 1 that is 2 times 1 by z that is for this term and you have a second term minus z times f of z minus f of 0 that is 1 plus f of z this becomes simply f of z that is 0. So, get the coefficient of f of z that has z square here minus z here plus 1 equal to and here if you bring this z square that is the other side this term. So, you have z square and here if you bring there is going to be plus 2 z and here minus z. So, this is nothing but z square plus z. So, that is z into z plus 1. So, you get f of z as uh, z into z plus 1 by z square minus z plus 1. So, how do I do this? Uh, what is the z transform? So, inversion will give inversion, inversion of z transform gives left hand side small f of n that is what is the solution that you are looking for and this is z inversion of z square plus z by z square minus z plus 1. So, you might have seen some in the denominator when you have z square uh, minus uh, cos x or plus cos x z plus 1 and the numerator uh, z square minus uh, minus or, or plus cos x z. So, what, you, what is this transform if you can remember uh, simply uh, cos and sin cos x z transform if you use uh, z transform of cos x is let us let us uh, recall those uh, z transform of cos x and sin x z transform of cos uh, z transform of cos n x ok. So, you need a sequence here. So, cos n x as a function of z this is equal to z into z minus cos x by z square minus 2 x 2 z cos x plus 1. So, we want to see whether this is in this form ok. So, z square so, how we can put this in this denominator? So, you have z square minus, so you need minus 2 cos z equal to minus 1. So, 2 cos z, 2 cos x should be 1. So, cos x is 1. So, this implies x equal to, so what is x? Cos equal to, so if x equal to uh, 60 degrees that is pi by 3, if it is pi by 3, then we know that this is true. So, x is, x value is this. So, uh, denominator will be same if x equal to pi by 3. So, so z transform of cos n pi by 3 as a function of z is z square minus z times cos x is 1. So, divide by z square minus uh, 2 cos x is 1. So, you have minus z plus 1 ok. So, this is what we know from this uh, z transform of cos n x. So, this you have to put it in that form. So, z inversion of z square minus z divided by z square minus z plus 1 because I added I have to subtract it. So, I, I subtract it. So, I have to add ok. So, So, oh, cos pi by 3 is basically cos pi by 3 is what? Uh, uh, cos pi by 3 is basically half, half z. So, you need half, half z. So, we have to put in this form. So, to do that, I will write minus half uh, z, ok. 
so that I have to add plus half z. So, z square plus half z and then you already have plus z divided by uh, z square minus z plus 1. Okay. Z inversion is linear, so you have a z inversion of uh, linear if you do write it, you have uh, z square minus uh, half z divided by z square minus z plus 1. So, this we know, this is the z inversion of this that is cos n pi by 3 plus z inversion of sin also if you look at it, you, put, you can put that in this form. Z transform of sin n x of z as a function of z, this uh, is uh, z sin x divided by uh, z square minus 2 z cos x plus 1, same denominator. So, x equal to pi by 3, sin pi by 3 is root 3 by 2, root 3 by 2 divided by z square minus z plus 1 is z transform of sin n pi by 3 as a function of z. Okay. So, this if we use here, so you get you already have a 3 by 2 z square, so you do not have any z square here, so you have only this one. So, I added this plus z, so you have 3 by 2 z you have 3 by 2 z, but you need is root 3 by 2, so that is only constant you can take it out, so you can write root 3 here, so that you have root 3 by 2 z. Okay. So, that one, so you can apply now, this is for which sign and this is for cos, so you have a z inversion of this is actually cos n pi by 3 plus this is sin n pi by 3. So, where is this valid? This is actually valid uh, for all z again greater than 1 because because of this, because this is the mod z greater than 1, this is valid and here also you can, uh, these are all valid here. Okay. So, in this is a complex domain, you have this is your solution f of n, n is running from 0, 1, 2, 3 onwards. So, this is your, uh, okay, of course, I missed this root 3, so you have root 3, root 3 times sin n pi by 3. So, this is your solution. Let us solve uh, one or one more, uh, then uh, we will look at the other uh, other solution, other application in the next video. So, let us uh, let's, let's look at solving, solve uh, f of n plus 2 minus 5 times f of n plus 1 my plus 6 times f of n equal to 2 power n. So, n is running from 0, 1, 2, 3 onwards. And this is second order, so you have to provide uh, initial and initial conditions that as uh, let us say 1, 0. So, the solution, so as usual z transform gives, makes the equation as uh, z square times capital F of z minus f of 0 is 1, other part is 0, so you do not have to worry and you have 5 times z times f of z minus f of 0 that is 1 and plus 6 f of n equal to 2 power n is z by z minus 2. So, this is valid mod z greater than 1 right hand side, so it should be everywhere left hand side also. So, f of z coefficient you bring it out, so you have z square minus 5 z plus 6 equal to z square and uh, plus 5 z uh, that is going to be minus 5 z and plus z by z minus 2. So, what is your capital F of z is? Mm. So, you can write this z square minus 5 z as uh, division z, z into z minus 5 divided by z minus 2 into z minus 3. This is, uh, this is the product of z minus 2 z minus 3 plus z divided by z minus 2 into z minus 3 and you have uh, one more time, so square into z minus 3. So, this is what is your f of z that is valid in this domain. So, you can invert this to get your solution. So, inversion gives, how do I get the inversion? So, before I do this, uh, before you get the inversion, you simply 
5z and you have z square. So, so z is common, so z you take it out and you have z minus 5 by z minus 2 times z minus 3 plus 1 by z minus 2 whole square z minus 3. So, let me write like this, this has your f of z. Then you write uh, f of z and you write it as a partial fractions, you see that z times this partial fractions if you write 3 by z minus 2 uh, minus 2 by z minus 3 as first term and here you get 1 by z minus uh, minus 1 by z minus 2 minus 1 by z minus 2 whole square and then plus 3 by 1 by 1 by z minus 3. So, this is what you will get. If you sum add this, this is your second term. So, this whole thing is with uh, z. So, you can uh, now invert it, inversion gives small f of n that is a solution 3 times z by z minus 2 you have 2 power n and here 2 is uh, constant z by z minus 3 is 3 power n and you have uh, minus uh, 1 constant z by z minus 2 inversion is uh, 2 power n and here minus z by z minus 2 power whole square is simply n right. Uh, z by z minus 2 whole square. Do we know that that is 1? That is actually z, z by z minus 1 whole square. Okay? So, we do not know this yet. We have to be very careful. This is not n. So, z by z minus 1, z transform of n is z by z minus 1 whole square, not z minus 2 whole square, but you have z minus 2 whole square. So, you have a z inversion of z by z minus 2 whole square, whichever you do not know, just write like this and you can see later. So, this one will be z by z minus 3, you can easily see that is 3 power n. So, if you combine this, uh, 3 power n will be 3 power n minus 2 power n. So, you have minus 3 power n, this two together and here this one together, you have 2 power n plus 1. So, 2 into 2 power n that is this if you combine, you get 3 minus 1 times 2 power n that is 2 into 2 power n that is 2 power n plus 1 minus z inversion of z by z minus 2 whole square. Okay. So, this one uh, can make use of. So, how do you get this? We already know that z transform of uh, z by z minus 2 is equal to uh, z inversion okay? uh, or, or rather z transform of 2 power n is 1 by uh, z by z minus 2. Okay, so, you know that z transform of n times 2 power n equal to minus d d z of z by z minus 2. So, if this one if you actually do, you see that uh, this is going to be uh, minus 1 by z minus 2 uh, minus z times minus minus plus 1 by z minus 2 whole square. Okay. So, if you actually combine it z minus 2 whole square minus z minus 2 that is going to be plus 2 plus z. So, it gets cancelled. So, you have how do you get this? So, if you have to do carefully. So, let me do this. This as minus 1 by z minus 2 minus z times now, if you do this uh, derivative 1 by z minus 2 whole square minus have uh, 1 minus 1. So, you have this is going to be combine it to see that uh, minus minus z minus 2 and this is going to be plus z. So, this is equal to, so you are getting only uh, 2 divided by z minus 2 whole square. So, n into 2 power n is this, but this is not what you have. So, how do I find this? So, 
So, let me use properly uh, some properties you have to be carefully how to use this property to get this inversion. Let me use uh, oh you have z right. So, I made a small mistake. So, you have a minus z times d d z of uh, z minus 2 ok. So, that is fine. So, you have uh, minus z is there everywhere ok. So, you have minus z everywhere. So, you have minus z. So, minus 2 z by z square. So, let me do this carefully. So, minus z times derivative of this is 1 by z minus 2 and you have a plus z times derivative of 1 by z minus 2 is this. So, if you actually do it uh, is going to be minus z times z minus 2 minus z by z minus 2 whole square. So, z z goes you have minus 2. So, going to be plus 2 z by z minus 2 whole square. So, inverse transform of z by z minus 2 whole square is 1 by 2 times 2 power n. So, you have uh, 2 power n minus n plus 1 minus 3 power n minus 1 by 2 times 2 power n. So, this is nothing but 2 power n minus plus 1 minus 3 power n minus 2 power n minus 1. So, this is your solution n is from 0 to 1 to. So, you you here you made use of this uh, property n into f of n equal to minus z times d d z of capital F of z which is the z transform of this sequence small f of n. So, if I use f of n as 2 power n since I know this, so you have this. So, you can see the, this is what uh, for this. So, this is your solution that you can get it for, as, uh, for this second order difference equations. So, this is how you solve uh, any first order, second order difference equations when the with the initial data uh, when it is provided that is provided uh, you can get the solution that is uh, nth term of uh, the sequence f of n ok. Nth term of the sequence uh, that is f of n as a solution of this difference equation you can get it just by using uh, z transform and uh, inverse z transforms. So, in the next video we will see the applications of these uh, z transforms to the to find uh, certain sums when you have when you when you, when you can you can evaluate certain sums uh, some infinite sums you can uh, evaluate using this z transform just like uh, what we have done now uh, just like uh, you have evaluated uh, integrals some integrals using uh, Laplace transforms. So, integral becomes a series sum infinite series sum and uh, you instead of Laplace transform. So, there it is expected because uh, discretized version of Laplace transform is z transform. So, we uh, just give that uh, application as uh, analogous application uh, of fi evaluating infinite sums using z transforms in the next video. Thank you for watching.